everybody to episode 26 of the Super Story Podcast. And the topic today, and don't run when I say it, mm-hmm. is going to be politics. Now, don't worry, everyone. We're not going to be telling you who to vote for. We're not going to be cutting each other off and ripping each other's heads off. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But Maybe the whole point bit. is, let's, let, let's have a good time. Sure. We'll talk about some story world, some cool things, how politics and transmedia could coexist. And uh, enjoy the show, everyone. Should be good. You know, they tell us, Trav, that like the, the two things you're not supposed to talk about are religion and politics, and those are the two things I like to talk about most. Uh, yeah. you know, which uh, which puts me in a lot of awkward situations when I go to parties and things like. Well, back back when we could go to a party, I guess we can't go to parties anymore. But um, but <laughs> yes. that's why people are always arguing with you. <laughs> right. I guess. I, 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 I guess so. I guess so. I, why? You know, honestly, I think that. Uh, uh, you know, part of the reason we're in the state we're in is because uh, people don't po- talk about politics enough. And um, and because and the only times we do, we like we 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 let our angers and frustrations build up so much because we never have dialogues with right. each other that when we finally get to actually talk to each other, it's just like vomiting. Yeah, uh, volatility it's hard to be constructive. People. You can't be constructive and fruitful when you're speaking out of emotion like that, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, um, so we're going to get started, uh, uh, in the first, uh, the first episode, w- the way we always start our zoom sessions. We, we, we actually haven't had one of these round table discussions in a while, guys, like it's good to be back in the saddle. Uh, we've had a crazy summer. I was in Kentucky yeah. for, uh, for 12 weeks, uh, which I feel like Frodo venturing across middle earth forever. Uh, you know, finally returned, uh, Brad got married, Trav, you moved, uh, you're in a new house. Uh, uh, we've been in flux, so, but it's good to get back in the saddle with you guys. Uh, so let's just start by talking about our backgrounds. Uh, and we always we always talk about your backgrounds. Zoom has changed that cultural uh, reference to when someone says, tell me about your, about your background. It no longer means about your resume. Literally, it means uh, tell me about your actual background on Zoom. So Brad, tell me about your background. Well, we're talking about politics, uh, talking about campaigns. So obviously putting the American flag back there. So, um, you know, this amazing democratic Republic that we have, there's so much to talk about. Um, but I kind of chose kind of a faded one that does have some light poking through, you know, mm-hmm. like I think what's awesome about our, our, uh, system is that, yeah, you can, you can poke holes in it, but it, it really does stand the test of time, the longest standing democracy. So there's, sure. there's always going to be light that's going to be coming through that can, uh, clean things up and resurrect things. So I, I'm I like still that. hopeful. I'm hopeful, even though uh, there is a little bit of chaos at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are the longest standing constitutional republic in history. In in the 250 years that we've been under our constitution, France has been under seven different constitutions. Right. Uh, yeah. When they had it, when they had a revolution very very close to ours. So uh, so yeah, there's something that endures about uh, about uh, about our our system, uh, and that that I think is pretty cool too. Trav, what do you got up there? Well, before I get in mind, because Brad is married now and has mm-hmm. a woman in the house, I'm really disappointed that when he was describing his background, he didn't go uh, from the artistic approach. It has an antiquated vintage look, uh, mm-hmm. a sepia, the white lines are like, was it called sepia, sepia? sepia yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I mean, it, you could actually wear it as clothing. But anyway, Brad, I'm going to forgive you on that one. <laughs> I, I chose mine twofold. One. If you guys are looking at this, uh, Brad in Houston, you guys may agree this that red pops with my skin. That my background it's true. is it's true. I'm just I like playing that. in a good I way. Like that. But I, I, I thought about uh, co- movies and conflict, and never before have we had such heightened hatred. At least it seems to me, where one detests the other. And if you look at that elephant and donkey, they're 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 angry donkeys, and I think they, they could be high concept cartoon. Uh, fighting uh killer elephant killer sure. donkeys you usually see them and elephants are pretty gentle though big and donkeys are pretty lazy and chill but you know if you kind of check that out there yeah i think it just lends itself to story um they are kind of conflict style. yeah the you know what's what's interesting about that is you know, now that i think about it i feel like really those two political parties just kind of 
mailed in their mascots. I feel like we could have upped the, uh, uh, you know, re revisit the whole mascot aspect of the two political parties Tell and increase that. So, uh, so quick, quickly, but with my with my uh, background, this is uh, the uh, a shot off the uh, at the Reagan Library. Uh, being out here uh, in, in LA, I love Reagan Library at Simi Valley. Just a beautiful, beautiful place to go. So uh, no matter what political party you're in, it's always good to honor previous presidents. I think that's always a good practice. So, you know what? I bought uh, a membership in, in March to the Reagan Library, and I haven't been able oh, to go back since because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a bummer. Uh, Sorry to interrupt. Year. It's time for the roundtable conversation. All right, thank you, Siri. Siri is now our, our, our official producer. Uh, we chose Siri to be our producer uh, because uh, Siri comes cheap. Uh, so, uh, but she is uh, segmenting us uh, from uh, from segment to segment. So, uh, today's roundtable uh, discussion is is how do we transmedia politics? Is uh, you know, uh, obviously, we're in a political season. Um, we are at, at the time of this recording, probably 30 days away from uh, from uh, a, a very significant election. Not just the not just the presidential election, but uh, elections across the board. We're being bombarded by uh, by pollsters and robocalls and political ads. Uh, uh, it seems like we can't escape uh, the social media aspect of it. Um, so, uh, so we thought it would be apropos uh, to uh, to talk about how do we how does story super story sort of fit in um, in this conversation. And um, you know, it's wild, guys. Like it just, I you know, I remember the, the first the first uh, the first uh, political campaign I really remember. I think was um, probably when 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 Clinton got elected. Um, I mean, I re I remember some previous. Uh, me, yeah, uh, I remember the eighty eight, the eighty eight uh, Bush George senior. H. W. Uh, or yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, Bush senior. Yes, and um, yeah, I I, I kind of remember that as well, right? And uh, like, who who? Cause that I, was the first was, time I remember. I remember seeing the the elephant and the donkey. Is I was in kindergarten. And they were showing us the two, and I was trying to figure out why one party was an elephant, why one was a donkey. I still haven't sure. figured that out. Sure, sure. I like and, to know, you know What's uh, <laughs> what's super interesting is um, is when you like when you go back and watch some of the debates uh, from uh, you know Dukakis and Bush or um, uh, you know Clinton uh, and 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 Bush. Um, or, you know, um, who, who Ross ran Perot, against, remember? yeah, like, I, gosh, I do remember the Ross Perot days, like the, the debates were all very different than they are now. It seems like, uh, I don't ever remember arguing with people over politics. I think, I feel like Bush v. Gore, uh, when that happened, uh, and it went to the Supreme court and there was that, uh, Florida recount that kind of ushered in this, this volatility, um, with, with the political, uh, system. It just seems guys like, uh, we're just in a mess as far as uh, just the political environment that that we live in today. It's just like a it, it's depressing and frustrating, and not just with the politicians, but but you know with how everybody kind of responds to politics and how people let politics just dominate their their emotions in such a like an awful way. Trav, like I don't know, like it, it's it's very difficult to 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 remember sort of the days when you can actually be cordial with people about politics. I um, you had mentioned something about Reagan and honoring past presidents, no matter sure. uh, who you, honoring the office. What such a prestigious office um, where America, we're airing our dirty laundry, we're uh, not just defiling, be, but diminishing the power and the respect of the the, the seat because uh, because of the attitudes. Um, sure. And there needs to be some um, some adjustments. And I'm very just I'm so discouraged uh, about. I don't care who's um, the president. I I call them Mr. President, whether I like sure. him or don't. Of course, Mr. And Mrs. President, right? Yeah, that's been taken away. Everyone feels you can just disrespect the office. It's okay to uh, have a difference of opinion, be be let down, but respect the office. You know what? Uh, dad was on crack. I've said it before. I never stopped calling him Dad. Mm, that's good. I respected the office of of, of parenthood. Sure. People's mother leave them, desert them, you know, and they say, man, I can't stand my mother, but they still say mother. Yeah. I, I think about these things mm. and 
I'm, I think about how I'm afraid to, to post anything on social media because I'll be ostracized by my own friends sure. or family. I can't come over for Thanksgiving or because I have a difference of opinion. It's crazy. And it's just a, a, the crazy divide that who you like. I mean, sure. I like the Browns. You like Cincinnati. I don't, uh, sure. you, you like Washington, Brad, and we can argue this. My team's going to beat your team. But, we, but we're still going to go out and have dinner with our families and and you know how we get about sports. Sure. So I, I, I where we're at right now in a nutshell, it is a it's a really scary, disheartening, vexing thing, and um, I've been just trying to wrap my mind around it every day. Sure. Uh, I I remember Brad when when I was a kid. Um, uh, speaking of Clinton. I remember, yeah, I, I come from uh, 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 Eastern Kentucky, pr- pretty blue collar conservative uh, uh, state, uh, especially that area. And um, I remember when uh, Bill Clinton took a he took a train tour across the United States and it was sort of this real highly publicized thing he did. And my house was like uh, w- and our, our community was sort of built right next to the the, the train tracks. And I remember. Uh, when uh, uh, the train, the presidential train was going to like r- just like zoom past. Uh, and and I remember even though we were in a community that that uh, was very conservative as far as the political leanings, I remember everybody uh, in that town like going out next to the train tracks, just so excited that the president was going to like zip yeah. by at 60 miles per hour, despite the politics, right? Uh, right. it, it, uh, you know, and it was cool. I remember I had that as a memory of, 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 you know, just being excited about it, uh, because it was just the president, um, you know, and, but, and it, but it seems like now with, with, with sports and the NBA and, and everything like what, whether who's right or who's wrong, it just seems like there's, there's, there is sort of this diminished view of, right. uh, of, of politics and, 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 and the offices and culture. I think it's just public life in general has changed with the advent of social media, right? It used sure. to be that your voice wasn't heard in the public sphere unless you had gone through proper channels to be formally published and, and looked at. And now you have people from their couch angry with emotion, like we were talking about before, and they're able to fire off posts at any moment on any platform that everyone is reading. And it becomes this echo chamber of just anger and misinformation. And so it doesn't matter. Everyone's in the crosshairs. It doesn't matter if you're uh, yeah. a celebrity. It doesn't matter if you're a politician. It doesn't matter, you know? And yeah. so, yeah, we've lost respect for uh, just respect in general. I think you're, you're right, Travis. It's just it's just yeah. a totally different world. Yeah. Do you see how that makes us us look, though, as a, we, were, we were supposed to be, America is supposed to be, you know, we've been elite, a strong country, the forefront, groundbreaking sure. technology comes from here, right? And we have other countries laughing at us, being a joke, because uh, things would happen in my household, and we would fix those things and talk about those things, but we wouldn't air our dirty laundry to the neighbors and to the world. I didn't go to school and say, hey, Miss Teacher, Dad's on crack. I was starving last night. You know, I'd call my grandma, right. someone within the family. Sure. Hey, can you feed me? Can you talk to Dad and help him get up on his P's and Q's and take care and be a man? Well, blah, blah. We are just airing it, and right. I, uh, I'm just disgusted with uh, not telling people who to vote or how to vote. But I don't care who's in there. You don't talk um, about your your president like that. I want people to talk about their boss like that and talk to it and tweet out him. Hey, you jerk! You suck! You do this, and you're an idiot. You're like you look like this or that. And and I'm I'm saying I don't care who's in there. Don't ever talk out loud about sure. your president now, like that. Go do it to your I, boss and see what happens. Why not you do it to your boss? Right. I think I think uh, it's also important to note with that. Um, I don't. Uh, what you're not saying is that uh, is that you can't criticize um, the, the president or politicians. Of course, you can. It's part of political speech, and it's part of the country that that uh, that uh, we're allowed to uh, to be opinionated uh, about politics, and it's good to to uh, to uh, inject ourselves in the into the political conversation. Um, but I think what we've lost is the ability to do that with kindness and empathy. 
right? And, uh, um, you know, and respect. And, and, and I think those two things aren't mutually, mutually exclusive. You can, you, can, you can have a very different political opinion uh, and, still, um, and still be respectful, still be kind, and still be empathetic to those yeah, that think, maybe live differently than you. I think that's one side of it, um, an important side of it. But another equally as important side of it is that the truth of what's going on, I mean, maybe, maybe there always was agenda and lies from the very beginning. Sure. Um, but misinformation can be st- spread that much faster now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, so yeah, not only is there hatred go- being thrown around, but you don't even know if there's truth being thrown around as well. It's crazy. Yeah, so we, it's we like following like- a campaign is just, it, it can be maddening. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. You're just listening to these dueling narratives that these, especially once you get down to the final two and the big, the big hitters, they're both crafting their own story about their candidate. Yep. And then they're crafting another story about the opposing candidate. Right. And you as the typical um, uh, voter have to try to sort through all the crazy. craziness. Let's, 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 take, let's take it from a very human standpoint, a heart standpoint. If both of you met Joe Biden or Donald Trump, at a bar, at a restaurant, you sat down, you just start talking, hey, how's your life? Oh, you have this many kids? Sure. Oh, you, you did this? You were, you're in Senate? Oh, you, you, you became a billionaire? How, how did that happen? See, the sure. Bible tells us to look for the love, sees the best, looks for the best in every person. I've been trying to watch these debates and everything saying, you know, what's good about that person? Yeah, yeah I, already, sure. I know what's bad or I, I'm hearing what's bad. bad. Mm-hmm. What's good about this person? That's good. What yeah, can I, I glean like from this person? I like that. And I think that I think that, you know, that goes to this conversation. The, the question then is, is, you know, can Superstory, can a multi-platform approach, can the things that we talk about on, on this podcast, can they uh, those principles be applied to something like a political uh, a political campaign uh, or to a politician? Uh, and I think they can. I think I think uh, that if you do, it allows you to amplify those good things. Right. So people don't have to like work so hard to try to find it. Right. I mean, everything's just so negative. And everybody just throws, you know, they're throwing the mud. Uh, but I think if you if you apply super story principles in the way you build your brand and the way you as a politician, um, then then all of a sudden uh, uh, I feel like you have you're better positioning yourself uh, in the market. Right. Now, this is coming from three entertainment people. Right. Uh, three traditional entertainment people. None of us are, are uh, uh, political. Um, you know, uh, commentators or we don't you campaign. Uh, I think it's relevant, uh, though. I mean, I think, if you think yeah. about how Trump ran his last campaign, I mean, it was very similar to, he understood how to garner support similar to a way that, you know, when he's on uh, advertising for The Apprentice, you know, how you're getting sure. viewers, right? It's, you stir, it, it, stir it, up it, emotion and you get people to really want to charge in. And at the end of the yeah. day, it's it's about, it's about capturing the attention of the audience and being able to communicate the information you need to communicate, no matter if you're in politics, if you're in movies, if you're in music, mm-hmm. it, it's all the same thing is how do you, how do you capture the attention of the audience? And yeah, Donald Trump did that in a, in, in a masterful way with, with not spending any money on ads. Uh, and, and nobody knew exactly what to do with it. Right. It's called earned right. media, right? So paid media is when you pay for, 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 uh, for an advertisement. Earned media is just when you create a circus and everybody look, everybody looks yeah. right. Also, like that. think about think about it like you know we always talk about soapbox. He basically printed it on hats on people all across the country, right? Make America sure. Great Again. So he yeah. he had it clearly defined what his soapbox was in his campaign, and he had it anytime there was a camera on or some sort right. of piece of social media or something. You had that soapbox front and center into everyone's minds see well, i imagine think super, go ahead go, go ahead jeff well i was thinking about soapbox this whole as you brought sure. up that subject up houston and transmediating a campaign i think about transmediating political movies and i think we could rattle off a bunch of ideas but, sure. but a campaign we start with soapbox what you believe the heartbeat the be, the advice you would give now part of what you just mentioned brad was the merchandising which is kind of a more of a straightforward branding but within transmedia we're starting stories tell facts tell facts tell story sure. sell excuse me you know imagine donald trump or biden or if they had to come to me i'd say okay when we say there's a commercial and i endorse this message why wouldn't we create a series of of movies youtube movies clips in these 30 second clips that 
work like a mini movie each time. And if it's make America great again, making this, showing this utopian society and America at the strength. And it's almost like you're giving a, a cinematic thing. And at the end, sure. it says, I endorse this world. I endorse this message. This is what you sure. have. That gets branded in the heart because then they start seeing this, whatever you call your yeah, utopian yeah. society. I was just thinking about that, like how I would want to do my, even my commercials from a transmediated way of getting sure. the soap bucks out there. Well, that's the thing, like with, with, with politicians, I think it's so, you know, there's so many issues out there. Uh, you know, when we're talking about soapbox, we talk about, you know, what is that core thing that you believe that you stand for and, and how can you kind of run, run with that as your central guiding principle with your entertainment? And there, mm-hmm. there are, there are so many issues out there, obviously when you're, when a president, with a presidential campaign, you know, there's, 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 you know, uh, uh, uh international issues, there's financial issues, there's, um, you know, uh, uh, domestic issues, there's racial issues, there's educational issues. Uh, but I think it's super important to out of the mix of all those different issues that are floating around that you have to obviously be able to have an opinion on, find mm-hmm. that one one thing that what's that one core principle that can really define you that then is sort of that guiding star uh w- with you as a candidate um i think donald trump did that pretty well with 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 make make america great again uh and jobs right like you know the the strength of the american worker i think uh um you know he, uh, he didn't try to pretend he knew everything about international politics and to all the intricacies of, you know, everything. Yeah. He, he just kind of stayed on that core message, which I think is a very entertainment thing to do. And I think it's helpful. Uh, when, yeah. The more you try to, the more you try to, you know, sort of uh, uh, just be everything to everybody and, and, and try to, you know, be right. more, more widespread and what you believe it, it figure out. I think it, it gets diminishing returns. Figure out. I think like, that's what's what hard about politicians is because they don't want to, stake their claim on anything they they want right. to they don't want to commit to anything because yes anything can change right. and then now they've already stuck into this one area that people don't believe in so they try right. to just throw little bits out there and see what people are getting behind and they don't ever want to write something down but you, you think know? about like the, the brilliance of obama when uh president obama was running and 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 just like that core message of hope and change hope mm-hmm. and change hope and change like set that soapbox out there and and no matter no matter he didn't get kind of pulled away from that messaging it was all hope and change hope and change hope and change and that just kind of led you through but you're you're right traditional uh traditional politicians are, are, are they, they want to be chameleons that uh that that they can say well the, uh, you know uh my educational policy is the a defining thing my international trade policy is defining my tax policy is defining well, but but like I feel like you got to boil it down. You know, see, I was the thing ex- is, is is what does hope and change actually mean? It, it it's not actually speaking to any certain issue, right? Basically, sure. all it was was like, okay, we had Republicans the last two terms, so change would mean re- Democrat. Well, well, well yeah. <laughs> right? but I, th- I, well, I mean, I obviously, there's I, more to it, but he didn't yeah. have to. It was brilliant because while it it spoke to the heart of what he was trying to go after. It didn't actually specify. Well, anything. it wasn't a it wasn't yeah. a policy position, uh, which I think maybe be too narrow. Um, uh, but if um, it was it was a principle, right? Mm-hmm. Of of uh, you know of he f- he felt like there was a fundamental flaw in the United States. He felt that right. the, the the country was flawed in, in an inherently uh, yeah, fundamental way, and mm-hmm. he he wanted to change that, but he wanted to change that. Uh, the only way you can change that is sort of this hope for this, you know, utopian future that he wanted to install. And so, uh, so I think the the soapbox, though, like you're saying, is smart to to find soapbox not around policy but around principle, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what is that conservative principle that you are bringing to the table? The, the VP debates the other night. I think you know one of the 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 principles that I don't think they the I, politicians just get so. They they get so much in the weeds of the policy discussion that they lose the principle. And, uh, you know, th- but you could extract the principle like, you know, when they were talking about the coronavirus and COVID, uh, you know, Mike, Mike Pence was saying, you know, we want to trust the American people with their own health. Uh, the principle of Kamala Harris is uh, we think the government needs to get in there and manage it because we don't trust the people to be able to manage their own health because we can trust the people. People make bad decisions. Those are two guiding principles that are fundamentally different, right? That aren't really that well 
and, and artfully articulated very clearly. You have to try to figure out how to extract those things out. I think the candidates need to need to understand how to define that and say the, the guiding principle of, of me as a politician is I want to be able to give the American people the liberty to be able to make their own decisions uh, for right or for wrong, right? Or say I want uh, we I think that that people make bad decisions when you, when they're left up to themselves, and I want the government to go in there and help correct those mistakes, right? Put that out there, say that, and have that be a guiding principle. I feel like that would hit better than just kind of forcing people to extract that out of the minutia of the weeds of all the policy disagreements that they have. You see what I'm saying? But I think what Obama did that really well. Uh, yeah. Kind of le left it open, left it big. Um, and, and uh, you know, and he was able to kind of then adapt it into a variety of different things, right? How much so, money do they raise for these typically? Are they raising to, to oh, run a campaign? Hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. That, and that's what I'm thinking. Like when me being in business, business development, me being in, in, in sales, right? Sure. I always try to paint when I'm pitching a story. I really do. I, I pull up pictures, visuals. And I show what could be because that uh, impinges, you know, it leaves an imprint on people. Yeah. And I think with all the money they raise, they, I think these guys could get a little bit more since we're going on Soapbox, since people follow like the heartbeat of something sure. like hope and change. How do you define that in a visual way? Because you can say it. And again, to me, that's factual or, or that's you telling someone. But if you display it, convey it, and you have a story, since we retain stories much longer, I think that these guys could really do well with creating a visual cinematic for lack of a better sure. word approaches to their of campaign course. and, and telling what they, the story they want to tell, of course. you know, hope and change, sure world with no hope, destitute, yeah. depressed, anxiety, okay. you know, make America great, show this, this dystopian sure. society of America just downtrodden and then start to, I think it's some yeah. cool things you could do. And I think and, people and can, I think Grab that. And I think you, you need to do that early. I think, uh, uh, you know, not, don't start it during an election season when it's going to be washed away. Like figure out like, you know, how to start branding early uh, and, and, and defining these things early, even before you even announce. Right. I think it's a big, big issue. So define soapbox. Obviously, that's part of our process. Then we always define the story world. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. The story world is, is, a, is a big thing. So if you have if you don't know what we're talking about, with soapbox, the story world, we have previous episodes of the Super Story podcast. You can go back and I encourage you guys to check out uh, soapbox and the story world uh, uh, episodes as well. Um, but like figure out like what it's it's not just about you. I think that's that that is a right. uh, that's a tactical mistake that the uh, that the politicians make is it's so you know, myopically fo focused on a, on a, um, uh, on, on a candidate. Remember our rule of thumb is, are you able to take the main character out and still right. have something interesting? Right. Uh, right. Well, that, now, that means like if the, if the politician thinks about themselves as the main, as the characters navigating this story world, sure. then in, in their campaign elements, you start putting out those different elements of, yeah. of the story world and defining those things and showing, okay, this is what I'm, as a character, what I'm reacting to, sure. And here's here's my stance on things. Because you think about it, like a story world doesn't always have to be, just be geography, right? Uh, a story world can actually be an organization. Like the story world is the CIA, or Men in Black was was a story world that didn't have to do with geography as much as sort of the organization of the Men in Black, right? So that's sort of a nuanced story world thought. Uh, and so if you say that your campaign is the story world that now uh, in the story world creates story potential that you can then express across platform. Now uh, you, you want to say, what are the other stories? Who are the other people that I can now start telling stories about within my campaign? And, and right. now all of a sudden, I, like you, you begin to brand the campaign as something bigger than the individual person, which is counterintuitive because you actually elect the person. Right. And I think if, if, if you create sort of a larger scope, that may be an interesting, and then the that other may be part an interesting of approach is is you know we always talk about building a high concept into yeah. your story world and so you kind of as a campaign identify what that is exactly that thing that's sure. going to make you stand out above the other candidate and kind of You're highlight right. that in your in your throughout all throughout the campaign 
Sure. I think I think, you know, Donald Trump had a tremendous high, high concept going in. I mean, he would he, he he wanted to be president. He's never been a politician. His high concept is I, I'm a billionaire I'm a businessman. I want to be president. That was the high concept that yeah. he was able to just really, really, you know, what I always tell people when they think about high concept, don't think of high concept as like a, as a complicated, nuanced artist. Think of high concept as like a dumb studio executive. Like what's a basic like like selling point? What's the big idea? Donald Trump's big idea was very clear, right? But when you had somebody like Rand Paul, who has a lot of like super interesting, nuanced political opinions, there's no concept there, right? And mm-hmm. and uh, and and that and that and that and that, and that hurts, right? I mean, Obama, honestly, President Obama had had a, had a had a tremendous concept uh, uh, around him. I mean, he was uh, that yeah. was the first black president. I mean, the first black president. That's boom. That's it, right? And and. Uh, uh, and that's that's that big defining thing that uh, was able to, um, uh, you know, I'm not saying that's the only reason he got elected, obviously, but that that definitely helped his branding, right? I mean, it's just from a branding perspective, figuring out that you know, businessman president, first black president, you know, first woman president with Hillary Clinton that she was able to define that as. I think Kanye, like you know, Kanye's been trying to wade into this, uh, you know, that creates an interesting high concept of, of, of a mm-hmm. rapper who wants to become uh, president, which is interesting. So I think that's a, that's a good point, Brad, of figuring out that high concept. And then once you have that high concept, how does that story world support that high concept, right? So if, 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 if President Trump is, is the businessman president, there should be stories of him reaching out to other businessmen, not necessarily political operatives, but like talking with private sector businessmen about, you know, uh, uh, how to fix problems and how the private sector can do this, and you know, try mm-hmm. figuring out how to apply that wisdom in there and showing that the coming out of the story world, I think is it just helps support that high concept even more, right? So, but I also think the the the, the candidate's hometown could also be a, a, an interesting opportunity for story work, right? Of of where did you grow up? Where did you live your life? And being able to storytell around that, right? Like that makes. I think can make you human and, and, and make you a little more interesting. Um, maybe there's other stories about your youth and about, you know, your come up that you can really, that you can really dive into. Um, but I think in order to do that, they have to be comfortable. They have to be comfortable with telling stories outside of themselves, which is right. counterintuitive to, 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 to politics. Uh, Trav, well, with, you know, with, with an artist, I mean, it's very like artist driven. And I feel like the only thing more egotistical than, then an artist maybe is a politician. So it seems like that could be a struggle, right? Oh, what, I was thinking about, I was thinking about uh, story world with um, president, the uh, people group would be uh, music artists, you know, any genre, but those are the only people who could run for president. And then their campaigns had to be, um, and their policies was based on the collective of music they wrote. So you go back and look at all the music and that would define what they, what they stand on, but <clears throat> uh, a musician, again, being so egotistical, uh, and we're talking about a people group and making, uh, who are the other people around? How interesting can they be? They would have to take that back seat. And I think it's smart. There was this one politician I saw, someone shared a video and he did a take on, um, I don't know if it was Armageddon and he went and he was collecting different people. He was a military guy. He's a, a, a Republican candidate for Congress out here in Texas, but he went all around the state saying this person was uh, kind of kind of like what was the uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone when you got all the old action heroes, the, the, the Expendables. Oh yeah, yeah the Expendables. <laughs> he did something like that, but he told sure. backstory on each one of these candidates, and he said, "This yeah. is my team," and they're walking in slow motion at the end. I think that's super any cool. candidate would be. I thought it was brilliant because it made Ooh. you root for the team. Yes. And if there's someone weak, you, there may be someone else on here that you like. There's a superhero within that. Sure. Uh, you know, you know what's something that politicians are really good at as far as telling stories outside themselves is the antagonistic force of your story world. Sure, the villain, right? You know, yeah, so sure. yeah. they're great at spinning these yarns about how awful the opposing candidate is and all the things that they've been doing, you know. But I think you can even go a step further and really highlight some certain stories that kind of are through lines that people are always, whenever they see you and the positive things you're bringing, it helps them remember all the negative parts about, uh, you know, the other person in the campaign. Because the the problem, I mean, the fact of the matter is we all know at this point, every, like at this point, we know 
that the president doesn't do this job himself or herself, right? Like the president like, is mm -hmm. not alone. There's a massive team of people that help support the president. And there's a team that I don't, I don't think we're in an oligarchy, right? I mean, we still have one person that's decision maker, but it's very much a, a team concept that is, right. is being utilized here. And, uh, and instead of trying to hide that, uh, to hide that and make it seem that uh, Donald Trump makes, uh, makes every decision by himself in a vacuum every time or, or Obama did or whoever, let's go ahead and just like lean into, yeah, we're a team and we do have a leader of the team. We do have the, the quarterback of the team. Uh, you know, we, we, we have our Joe Burrow uh, uh, and we're going to build around him. Right. Oh, I don't know. Don't, don't look at that. Don't have that face. Brad. <laughs> Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow, first three out of the first four games he ever played in the NFL with no preseason and no offensive line. He's thrown for 300 yards uh, for three of those four games. Uh, just a tremendous looking talent. If they just get some, Offensive lineman to protect him, yeah, so he doesn't. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what people, own, that's what people do own. when they're from Ohio. That's, that's it. He needs his, he needs some Secret Service agents keeping keep some people people yeah. off of him for sure. But um, but I think leaning into that concept, one of my favorite my favorite all time favorite TV shows is The West Wing. Uh, I watched The West Wing when it was when it, when it, you know was aired originally, and then when my daughter was born, Soraya. Uh, when she was super tiny and all you could do is like sit in a rocking chair and like rock her to sleep for hours. Like that's all that I just, we went, I went and rewatched all the seasons of, of the West wing and binge right through them. Just a great, great show. And what I love about that show is that it's a, it's an, you know, of course there's the president, but it told the stories of everybody else on the team and you bought into the team, Rob Lowe's character, right? Bradley Whitford's character, like, like, like you know, Toby, uh, like the press secretary, like uh, CJ, uh, like even the the, 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 the the low level staffers, you bought into the team and the stories of the team. And I think using that, uh, using that ensemble approach of the West Wing and engineering that in reality uh, mm -hmm. to, to have emotional connections to a variety of people could be a really super effective tool um, because you wouldn't actually produce a TV show just about what one person. You always build it around that team because it creates another story opportunity, right? But then you have to tell the stories, right? And, and, and we've seen politicians tell stories. You know, AOC, Michelle Obama uh, have, have documentaries about them. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza has, has produced movies. Ted Cruz has a, has a really super popular podcast. Obviously, Obama, uh, before he became president, uh, wrote a book. Uh, was it uh, something or what was it? Uh, Memories of My Father or something like that. I can't remember the name of the book. Mm. Uh, but that helped define uh, define him as a as a person, as a politician. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, again, don't wait until the election to start releasing stuff. You go ahead and start branding yourself early. And, and letting people know your story yeah. early, uh, and, and so that then kind of ramps up to the uh, to the election. But 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 whether that's you know movies, podcasts, books, documentaries, um, digital content, what I would say is is obviously in the transmedia model. Let's not just pick one. Let's do them all, right? Let's figure out what the podcast is. Let's figure out how do we shoot a documentary. Let's figure out some little uh, uh, some um, um, uh, oh yeah the. Uh, let, let's figure out some uh, uh, some cool short digital content that we can uh, that we we can uh, uh, that we can kind of maximize across YouTube and things like that, right? Um, uh, that's not completely foreign, but I would say let's figure out how to ramp it up even more, right? And really really tell uh, the politician stories, stories of con constituents. Right. Like of, of yeah. you know, who are just regular people. Right. Let's just tell the story of the American people and, and what they're dealing with. Uh, again, that that isn't just an, an ad or an ad campaign. Right. Uh, so stories about the campaign itself. I feel like there's uh, there's stories to tell. We just have now. At what point, though, does it become propaganda? Right. Like there, there's there's a line where we start to lean into non-legitimate entertainment and it just feels like a big propaganda piece where do you think that line is brad um well that's tough because uh, truth can't even be your dividing line because you know campaigns right. for have been lying about each other for a long time sure um so yeah at this point they're 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 doing fictional entertainment they're just not doing <laughs> right. it they're just not crafting it sure. very well Right, you, know, right, right. you can you can still maximize what they're doing is, you know, I think yeah, yeah. is what we're getting at here. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's. Um, I, I, well, I think it's, it's if we have trying. the heartbeat of the um, that soapbox, and if you're if you're true to it, it, it's in you and it's seeping out of your pores. 
you run with it from non-fictional uh, stories to fictional stories uh, to really say, hey, I told this fictional story because I really wanted to say this and articulate this in a way that yeah. my mouth couldn't. And I think people would, would, would buy into, see, people buy humans. They don't buy policies. Mm. And if everything yeah. is just surrounded by like everything he represents, yeah, I, I'm endorsing this movie. I'm endorsing this message. Uh, here's the non-fictional pieces, the biographies, the stories I want to tell that's going to undergird and keep me true for my four to eight years. I'm always going to sure. fall back on these. I think people will buy it, whether it's yeah. salesy or not. And try to do high, high, here's high concept. Try to do that without ever bashing the other person. Mm. How about oh, you just up with your I'll campaign without putting <laughs> putting others down in such well, a way where you're Toss me some of the butthole. super story hacks over here. That that's good, Trad. No, I like that. It's a good high concept, sort of a positive pol politician. I like that, um, uh, one hundred percent. So now we're going to talk about the, the super story hacks. Sort of, you know, some some uh, some practical things um, that we can do um, that I think uh, uh, could be could be super helpful uh, for in in a political campaign. We talked about maybe uh, uh, you know for East Coast extensions. We we say one of our the opportunities is always other character perspectives, right? Other characters' perspective in this in this case could be other uh, you know other staffers or other people in the campaign. We just talked about that. Um, one thing that I one thing that I I, I uh, that, that I always kind of go back to is um, is and, and maybe this goes back to even the high concept thing is it just seems like especially when you watch the debate is uh there's so many times when they never answer the question and that's just maddening is that they're just, that. Being, oh, man, they're just so evasive that they, they, they'll ask the question and 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 they won't just like say okay let me let me just respond to that person first and then they'll come back to the question is they'll say you know uh you know uh senator biden or vice president biden i uh, will you pack the supreme court with supreme court justices no answer to the question, right? Like it's just this maddening thing. I think to the American people that becomes maddening when, when you just won't answer questions. Um, and sometimes in the midst of a debate, there are people that ask you questions and you don't have time to really flesh them out. I think answer, figuring out how to answer every single question um, uh, is, is a transmedia opportunity. If you, even if you can't do it in the two minutes of a debate or you can't do it you know, in, in, in certain you know, uh, uh, you know, videos and releases, figure out how to use every channel um, uh, that you can to be able to answer every single question. Um, because I feel like that's, I mean, uh, Trav, don't you think it's yeah. frustrating when people, when, when, when they refuse to answer questions or they don't get the chance to answer the question, they get cut off and then, and then we never know. Right. Like that. Oh, yeah. Just, you, what I was noticing in the latest debate, um, that questions did get, did get answered because the person was trying to answer the question, defend themselves from the question that the other person didn't answer. And I know that sounds yeah, confusing. Right. Sure. Transmediating that and doing some East Coast extensions, as we call them, to say, here are the questions I didn't answer, however you want to get those answered with us. Yep. And here's the questions that my counterpart didn't answer. And I, I know I talked about not bashing, but there's you can point out, hey, you know what? I never heard from you on this. Here, I'm going to fill mine in when you leave yours, fill yours in. If they don't, they don't. But at least you filled your, your questions in. Because I was rooting for, um, I was rooting for, uh, what's her name? Kamala Harris. What's her Kamala Harris. To do a good job, she's a, a female vice president, woman of cup, woman of call. I'm like, go on there and kick butt. And I'm not saying that. I, I I'll put a disclaimer. That's not saying I'm vo voting for her. I just wanted her to do well sure. in her presentation. I never heard of her. I'm like, okay, represent right. I was highly, highly disappointed. And I'll use the word vexed again. Because she happened to start this whole not question, oh, at least from what I caught, they asked, said, "How would you fix?" I don't know if this was the first question, but yeah, pretend it was coronavirus. How would you fix it? We've seen Donald Trump kill yeah, right. two hundred thousand people. It's talking points, it, right? Yeah, and I said, "What just?" I said, "I wanted yeah. to know. This was sure. your moment to impress me, win me over." And for about something so scary, what's the step by step plan that Kamala yeah. and, and Biden have to fix this coronavirus thing or, or, or attack? And I don't think there's any fixing, but what's your best plan of attack? I yeah. never heard the plan of attack until 10 seconds. She said some of the same things that the other party. I said, 
I didn't get that question. You just bashed, bashed, bashed and the and other here's, party. Here's the opportunity, I think, with that, Trav, uh, is, is I think even if like two minutes is not a long time to talk, right? And it's mm -hmm. so artificial. And I'm like, I kind of over the debate format. I feel like you should just put two people in a room and, and turn the microphone on and just let them go and let them talk, right? And then with no time limits about this stuff. I think I feel like that's weird. But um, uh, what I would do is is I would try to answer the question as quickly as I could and then say, listen, this like there's there's no way I can answer a question like that in two minutes, right? But guys, listen, as soon as this debate ends, I'm going on Facebook Live and I'm going to I'm going to talk mm -hmm. for 15 minutes of, about the, the real the detailed plan of, of how we're going to fix the covid problem or whatever. Right. I'm going to do a periscope where uh, where I'll answer all the questions in depth for uh, for as long as I want. Right. All of a sudden now you're 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 uh, you know, you're you're transmediating even the debate and uh, and saying I'll, 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 I'm going to answer the question. I'm just going to answer it in a different way. Right. Or a different place. Uh, uh, right. to give you the short version here, the long version over here. I think, I think, you know, one of the, one of the, the biggest suggestions I would have for, for politicians is to really lean into using live video. Um, I think AOC, whether you like her politics or not, uh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she, she knows, she like, she knows how to use Instagram live, <laughs> Periscope, live video, uh, to really build audience and everything in politics is so canned and non-transparent. Um, the more you could actually just use live video uh, to to just continue to communicate uh, with with the with the American people, I think that's just super 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 effective. Um, what do you think, Brad? What do you yeah, think about think the uses? Good point about using. That's awesome. Yeah, I think using all the different platforms appropriately. It seems like they try to just put all the same content on every single channel, just hoping. Yes. Oh, okay, this this demographic only uses this one, so I want to put everything on there. But yeah. then it all just gets drowned in every, it, you just get yes. drowned out by the noise. Instead of exactly. isolating, okay, let's put our responses to this issue on this certain platform because that's most relevant to the audience of that platform. Yes. Let's go to the other platform and focus on this other issue. And so that'll that, be a real clear stream of, of uh, consciousness about each issue that you could go to. So if I want to know, okay, what does Biden think about? these three issues. Well, I'm going to go to this platform, download his information on this issue. It should be very clear that if he's changing and waffling or not, because only only thing on that one platform is going to be a, a story about that certain issue. And then sure. you go to the next platform and you see, that's interesting. You know, instead of just garbling it all into everything, and then it's yeah. just a big mess. And that and that's the, and that's the problem. That's part you know part and parcel of like the platform theory of, of, of Superstory is that every platform has its own unique language with its own unique market that that uh, um, that that you need to treat separately and divide your message up across these platforms so it's not all in one place because you try to dump everything in that one place. I think what you're saying is it just waters down everything, right? And yep. so so if you were to say. On Instagram, Instagram is going to be my focus on education, on college, on student debt, uh, because yep. that's going to target the demographic better there. Uh, then, uh, you know, on Facebook, it, because it leans a little older, I'm going to I'm going to be talking about uh, Medicare, like Medicaid, healthcare, family, healthcare, yeah, hundred percent, right? And all of a sudden, you have very tactical approaches to yeah. the different platforms you, you know, use. Twitter, Twitter is a platform more for high level policy type decision making and uh, yeah just divide it up and have a real clear plan of attack sure and i, I tell you trap the one thing that, that i'm just very bullish on is when we're you know we talk a lot about building brand you talk a lot about building brand and um and i think one of the best ways to build brand and this is this is what kind of why we structured the podcast this way is that we always want to build value uh the best way to build brand is to build value and um uh if the, the, the problem is, is usually politicians don't do anything to help build value. They, they want you to elect them so that they will build value. But I think if you if, if the politicians leaned into all these channels with with uh, with value based content, not stump speeches, not uh, like talking points, but actually trying to um, uh, uh, bring value into people's lives, that um, that is what ultimately builds brand. I mean, I think if, if, if you're a businessman running for a political office, uh, you should be going on to Twitter and um, uh, Twitter and uh, uh, Instagram and all these different things and just doing doing uh, uh, some sort of educational based videos of, of how to do business better, helping businesses. Mm -hmm. Here's a business tip. 
for your business. I'm a businessman and you have a small business. Let me bring you value in that way. I'm not talking about my political talking points. I'm just trying to bring you value, right? Uh, that I think is, uh, is, is, could help build brand better than just these talking points that just, you just tune out after a while. What right, do you think right. about that, Trev? And, and, and I, th I think that you guys mentioned some, some brilliant ideas in, ter in, in terms of extending on different platforms. And uh, you mentioned like Instagram lets you do one minute videos. I noticed in that in those debates, they'll say two minutes, but they'll say, hey, you have one minute. Uh, I will put on platforms the one minute sectors uh, that, that didn't get answered or what have you on an Instagram, any platform that had the one minute. I would probably have, when you talk about building brand and having honesty, um, if I'm a Democrat, I would, I would say uh, Republicans, I would have a format and a video format, ask, ask me anything. Sure. These are questions that Republicans want to know about me. These are, as a, a Republican, these are questions that Democrats want to know about me. And I'm going to answer. You can't answer back, but you get to find out what you want from me. And I, and I think that's good. And I love the fact about the, the, the advice. Like if you do stand for something, what are the different ways you're giving value in that? That's it. Uh, as a candidate, I, I love that idea because, and just put that out there on all and kinds of formats, written, video. That's uh, it, as much, as much as you can. And it may not have to do with the, the hard politics of it, but it has to do with what you stand for as a politician. And, and ultimately building value, I think builds that brand through education, hacks, tips, encouragement, however, inter, you know, uh, entertainment, however you want to build WWO 3D, what would 1-3 do? So what would 1-3 do is a is a segment where we always, uh, we take something in the marketplace and we uh, uh, we, we say, what would we do to transmediate it? Um, so, uh, so you know, whether it's a movie, a, a TV show, a song, um, and, and it's a short segment, but I think it's a, it's a valuable segment to to have. Um, uh, do you guys remember the uh, those videos, the Soul Pancake videos, Kid President, uh, and uh, where you had you had this this little kid, and he was just the kid president, and he was he was he was always sort of bringing this crazy optimism and excitement and 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 really kind of went viral there for uh, for a couple of years I mean kid president became pretty big sort of disappeared uh uh in the past couple of years but but uh how would we transmediate kid president right because I feel like that was just a great idea great high concept right I mean right. high concept is reflected in the in the title just like slumdog millionaire right ant man things like that kid president sells that high concept uh, right, right, right away. Um, what would we do? How could you grow that brand into something bigger and more sustainable? You guys have any ideas? Well, I loved uh, the slogan that he that his website uses it says, "Don't be in a party, be a party." You mm, know, and that kind of that kind of speaks to the mentality he had on all those videos that yeah made it super fun. And so, whatever he's talking about, it it instantly brings engagement with it. You know, sure. Sure. And it, like he had a clear soapbox, right? Clear soapbox of, 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 uh, you know, how just to be awesome. Uh, you know, how are you making the world a more awesome place? The, the, the brand of, uh, of kid president building that brand, it, it would be so fun. Uh, because inherently kids have this innocence. They have their, a brand of truth. Sure. Mm. And, uh, optimism, many things can be, done right and right. one right. in building that brand and building that that story role for one it's it's in the name kid presidents sure. we we build a movie of this series of 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 kids how how would kids debate each other how would kids they could be elected and their cabinet is, is made up of adults and the adults have to figure out these ways to, they have to make these kids wishes um desires come to pass so if that kid hmm. says i want harmony and to be in perfect peace with uh, the Middle East or whatever it is, sure. right? So you, you have that. You can have a kid present movie, but then you can have these series of shorts. What's the, the, there's this new thing that they're doing like 10 to 15 minute movies or uh, it's, uh, I think there's an app. Like Quibity? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you have these series of, uh, like, like Brad, you mentioned, he says, don't be the, uh, don't be in a party, be the party. What are sure. these mandates that, that 
that kids think? How do they think when they say, let's get this done, let's do that. And we put that in a bunch of, uh, a series of short films of how that would play out uh, these crazy, uh, perfect society or, or just like they, they, they think they can conquer the world in some very sure. unique ways. And it's funny, or they, a kid will come up and say, hey, your breath stinks, you know? Sure. But they yeah. don't mean harm by it. <laughs> You know, it's, it's those things because, out. because yeah, I think I think you can you definitely build build that high concept out of like you know child politicians. Maybe you can build a universe where where you know everybody gets sick of like adults ruining everything. That Ooh. you know we just like flip flip the script to say okay, kids are in charge and really kind of do a fun take like that. Um, and, and and obviously yeah. you know like it would it, it, misadventures would ensue right with 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 child politicians. Um, but I think you could also maybe even go a, maybe a different way by broadening out that group instead of uh, just a, a group of child politicians. You can look at what the kid president stood for, the soapbox, and and uh, you know it, it's a kid trying to make the world a better place in, in some awesome way. Uh, it's a child trying to make the world more awesome. And, and whether you do a fictional take on an actual kid president, which I think you can do in kid politicians. You may ask, you may be able to keep it even in the, the reality uh, uh, aspect of the brand just by finding other stories of other kids who are trying to make the world a better place and more awesome in a variety of ways. Right. Right. Yeah, uh, right. I think that's the like, community section, though. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like major, major, big film, qu- Quibi, uh, some community stuff, finding the, the reality and you're meshing that, meshing those things up because it's all one big world and sure. drawing people in I, I think you're absolutely right um and and the reason why i'm thinking on the way i was thinking because i saw in the bible that sometimes it said so-and-so was 12 and he became president uh, sure a king yeah, for, yeah i'm like Josiah, yeah. what did that look like what well, the yeah, heck no, did good. that look like i think it would be i would think <laughs> so that's what just, interesting if 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 somehow the you know the constitution was was amended to to allow for for a child to be president and you and you see and you see that play out in an actual story then and and then that maybe was so successful that then you know that that creates a change and and here's the cool thing in in, in the superstore model you don't have to do either or right uh, you can do both and, right. and so now we have sort of that fictional entertainment side of building out uh, you know th- this fun uh, you, I mean you could almost like kind of do it as uh, as like middle grade fiction if you want to do some publishing almost like Diary of a Wimpy Kid and things like that right where where what would happen if the kids were in charge and kid presidents and things like that. Um, but but really build build some commu- on the community side. Build a series of stories of finding other kids doing being awesome in their community in a variety of ways. Maybe they're child entre- maybe they're kid entrepreneurs. Maybe you know uh, whatever. But kids doing awesome things that you don't expect kids to do, right, Brad? Yeah. I think yeah. I think that and, that's a way to build that brand. You know, and our future is always based on kids. So, you know, showing them, hey, your voice is worth listening to. Um, you know bring bring some ideas and excitement into what you're what you're building towards in your life and not you're not just hanging out you you are a valuable member um, sure so so it, bringing fun to whatever you know bringing fun to the medical profession bringing fun back to yeah. school you know kid superintendent you know like yeah yeah sure like looking sure. at the aspects of life and getting excited and bringing a party to it like like you were saying that's it. Like, as I think right now, like it, if you just leave it as a series of YouTube videos with this kid as president, that that idea has a shelf life necessarily. That kid is uh, right now. I, my, my instinct is the reason they don't do videos anymore is that kid's voice probably changed and he probably grew up. Right. I, uh, and, and all of a sudden you lose your high concept. Right. So that necessarily has a shelf life. Uh, but if you take the high concept and the soapbox, you can actually build something bigger that is even beyond that that one kid right uh and i think there's 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 a, there's a there's an interesting um there's an interesting way to yeah. do it Wait, in music trap one of the things that we listen to a lot uh is um you know we listen uh, we listen to like kid like uh, uh kids covers of, of adult songs right and uh kids bop i don't know if you ever uh, like, there's a whole series of albums called kids bop right and and uh you know, it's, 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 it's sometimes a lot of fun. Now they change the curse words and sort of the objectionable content and things like that. Uh, but it's cool. Like there is something interesting about kids doing adult things that is just always a fun concept. And I feel like you can kind of build a brand in a really interesting way. Like what happens when you have a kid CEO of your company? Like you put like, like with the kid CEO, like how would they change things and how would they do things? Uh, 
you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 the the kids, uh, the, the you know, the the kids are the uh, a kid is a pastor of a church or whatever it is, and like you know, there's a lot of fun that can have that have that because the thing that we've seen extracted from our culture uh, in recent years is just the ability to have fun, and uh, right. you know, and 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 being able to kind of interject fun into uh, the world. I think it would be that purpose of the brand. So I feel like there's music and there's yeah. Uh, uh, I was thinking of... about that, about the, the, the branding aspect, some, some really cool things that you could do. For one, for kid president to live on, another kid president should have been nominated in, in, a, in, in, a, that's, in a way. That's cool. That's and, and show Show how that play, plays out. Right. And, and then, but then I think the kid president should hang with the, the president for a day instead of me using the president. The, our president says, hey, what would you do? And then a sure. kid president hangs with a pastor and hey, you're going to preach and you're going to sit with me in my knees and you follow. And it's all about leadership because that's what it's that's about. Good. That's good. The innocence and the thought process of a child getting out these cool ideas. I like that. You know, so you could do that and realistic to do that brand. But uh, I like that. Good. I know it sounds cliche, but you got mail. All right, now we got five, we got five minutes of the mailbag. Uh, so um, this is where we answer uh, uh, our audience's questions. Uh, so I do a lot of speaking. Uh, I, I get a lot of questions. We get questions sent in from the uh, uh, from the audience based on my books, uh, based on the podcast. Uh, and this week I got a question from a guy named Lawrence, and Lawrence uh, says. Uh, isn't it bad, historically speaking, uh, to be a jack of all trades? Shouldn't I attain some level of mastery in one area be- before I begin to diversify into some other things? So, um, so we got five minutes. How would you guys answer Lawrence's question about whether we should be a jack of all trades or whether we should master one area and then once we nail that one thing? Then we grow from there. Probably gonna hate me for this, but Lawrence, do both. You 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 are the master of something. There's something inherently built in you that you're gifted at, and and you hone that skill and you pay more attention to that. Uh, but there is nothing wrong with learning other skill sets to a certain de- degree. It's going to open up your network, which is going to open up your network. You'll be able to talk and communicate with a lot of different people, be in certain rooms. You'll be able to be a CEO and say, you know what? Uh, I know a little something about that, but then you can always hire people who are better than you in er- uh, in other areas, but it's good to have a little bit of knowledge in in everything. Um, Trav, Trav, what did you, did you say? Did you say open up your network and it'll open up your net worth? Yes. Is that a line from a song or did you just like riff that yourself? Well, I, that's, um, I've heard that years ago from just reading my personal development books, your, your net, your net work will always define your net worth. Interesting. I feel, like you, you a, I feel like you should write a song around that. Like that's interesting. Yeah. I feel like that's, a, that's interesting. There, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Right. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> well, uh, Brett, for me, Brett, I always, Jack of all trades. I always right? like the, the whole the Beatles model of basically when they were early on learning their trade, their craft, you know, they they learn a few chords. And instead of waiting till they learned every chord and every scale to write the first song, they learned a few chords and they wrote a song using those chords. So basically you learn something, put it into practice right away. You know? So as you're I'm learning clap your, for that, Brad. That's your storytelling, you know, you learn a little bit in one area, go ahead and, and do that. And then you're starting to learn something else. Do that, and you can be developing simultaneously in all those areas. Sure, and and what's super interesting, guys, about this whole jack of all trades thing is that I think culturally, yeah, it is it is looked uh, poorly looked upon to be to for to be a jack of all trades. There's this thing that we hear, but really, I think uh, as as an industry in the entertainment industry, especially like uh, as an audience, audiences have always revered those those artists that have done more. J Lo, 
Beyonce, right? Like we, we, we like you know, the ability to act and sing and dance and do all these things. Like we usually like laud those people, Jay-Z, he's, you know, he's a businessman and he's a rapper and he does these different things. We usually put those people on a pedestal and we don't sort of uh, label them with this jack of all trades pejorative. Well, also, I think, right? I think to, to Travis's point, it's really what it is, is becoming a mastery at storytelling, master at storytelling. Sure. Um, and then to Travis's point, you can hire people to help execute in different areas. That's good. You're not, I mean, even when you make a movie, right? You're, you don't sure. do everything. everything. You're a director. Right. You're not actually setting up everything, building the sets. You're not doing the acting. I mean, yeah, you're, it, you're needing your other people. It, your it goes right along with this. It goes right along with this whole topic of politics. Let me tell you something, Lawrence, that I learned thing. early. Someone who knows how to do a skill particularly well will always work for someone who does not know how to do that skill particularly well. That's a T-Rev proverb right there. I like that. Uh, did you rip that off somebody else too? Or is that yours? Like, uh, I, 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 like, man, I wish I take ownership. Just, 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 like, just take, just take ownership of them, Trap. Like, they, these are good, right? Like, uh, you know, net, network uh, uh, makes the network. The teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Uh, no, that's no. You're you're right. I, I think that's I think that's really good. But here's a little piece of history that I think that that I think you'll find interesting is that, that you, we've heard that phrase "jack of all trades, master of none," right? Uh, and and that is usually what you hear uh, and, and to to make you not want to be a jack of all trades, right? You don't want to be mediocre at everything. You want to be great at one thing. Um, so, but but that's actually a misquote. That's a Benjamin Franklin quote, and it's actually a misquote. Benjamin Franklin, in a letter, actually said that we need to be a jack of all trades and master of one, right? So, uh, yeah, that's actually, and it's exactly opposite of what everybody always says, which is if you're a jack of all trades, that means you're master of none, and that's a bad thing. No, no, Benjamin Franklin says it's good to have your thing. It's good. Like if you're a songwriter, you need to have that mastery of songwriting. If you're a filmmaker, have that mastery of filmmaking. Uh, but but just because you have a mastery doesn't mean that you that you have to limit yourself in that way. Uh, uh, go ahead and diversify. Go ahead and push out into some other areas. Find a team to collaborate with, and and at the same time have that mastery in a cool way. But that's a misquote, and I feel like we need to change that. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Ben's rolling over in his grave. We've been just I know, misquoting man. it forever. You know, he also been misquoted on separation of church and state. But that's a whole other actually. <laughs> ben Frank, actually, Ben Franklin hit me up with some recommendations before you go. Some. Uh, okay, there we go. The, that, that, which is even better, right? right? Which is even better than even one, right? So, um, so now we we over the last five minutes here, uh, we want to give some recommendations for Grand Entertainment. Uh, you know, as entertainment people, we're always consuming entertainment. Uh, so, what uh, have you guys been watching, playing, reading, uh, listening to anything that you would recommend to the audience? Uh, so, I'm I'm extremely late to the party on this uh, on the Avatar last the last airbender uh universe but it's wow. it's completely amazing because i remember watching a little bit here and there when it was airing a long time ago on nickelodeon you're but, talking about not the not the live action movie the, the actually yeah, the anime the series. live action movie is an abomination and it right. should be completely like discontinued from any being able to watch it anywhere uh, sure. but the actual cartoon is that's a mastery for sure and so go to netflix watch avatar the last airbender then there's the follow-up series called the legend of korra not not as good but still pretty cool because it takes place a few generations later after the first uh after the first series it's so awesome. good so good that i've already like i'm buying the comics now they have comics that were uh going on during the original series then they have comics that bridge the gap between the two series you're and going then, full, full and super story. comics that are after the second spin-off uh, continuation series. So it's a yeah, pre pretty awesome story world. Um, great storytelling, great story building. Definitely. I've already put it because of your recommendation. I've, as we, you were talking, I put it in my Netflix queue. So I will take you up on that. Also, another re recommendation is Ted Lasso on, uh, on um, Apple, uh, Apple TV plus uh, where uh, Ted Lasso is. Um, uh, he's an American football coach that goes over to coach an English uh, uh, football uh, team, a soccer team. 
and uh, it 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 has no business being as good and awesome as it as it is. I thought it was going to be this throwaway show What's it called? that like uh, Ted, Ted Lasso. Lasso. I've been hearing great yeah. things about it. Like I absolutely, like yeah, uh, you know, we're we're limited in what me and Courtney can watch together because of Soraya. She's six, so uh, we're always kind of looking for stuff. Uh, that is just a really tremendous show. Um, also, You're not watching I, the boys around your daughter, are you? No, no, I have to okay. and watch watch the boys, right? The boys, uh, you, I wouldn't watch the boys with my daughter, my grandma, or my mom anywhere in, in the house. So, um, no wonder so, he said don't. He said don't watch this one with Marika for some reason. No, no.